everyone, thank you for taking the time to watch today's message. I think you're really going to enjoy it. If you do, make sure you like, you subscribe, you share, and engage with us throughout the entire celebration. It's always fun when you're giving those thumbs ups, those emojis, those amens. Come on, you can even shout me down as you're watching online. Again, thank you for watching today and hope that you enjoy the Word of God today. Victory in the Valley. Sometimes life is hard to bear. Full of sorrow, trouble, and fear. It's then I remember. If I had stayed at the summit and never experienced pain, my life would be lived in vain and I would receive nothing of eternal gain. I don't know why things happen as they do, but I am confident my God will see me through. My valleys are nothing when I survey the cross. My Savior experienced suffering and His victory was our enemy's loss. I have much to learn and my progress is often slow. I know the battles in the valley, but so are the rivers that flow. I prefer the mountaintop, not the trouble down below. But this one thing I am certain, it's in the valleys that I grow. Amen, church. Aren't you glad that we serve a God of the valleys? Then we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We don't have to fear no evil. For our God is with us and his rod and his staff will comfort us. Aren't you thankful for the God of the valleys? Amen. I know I am. We're starting a new series today called God of the Valleys. But before we get there, uh, when you either, either came in or you leave today, you're going to be given a Easter invite. And you know these Easter invites are not just for you to put on your refrigerator at home, right? They are for you to bring somebody to church with you on Easter weekend. Everybody can bring somebody. Everybody can bring somebody. Including the people in the back and the people in the balcony. Come on, y'all. Wave at me if you're going to bring somebody with you on Easter weekend. They'll come with you on Easter weekend. And if you bring somebody with you on Easter weekend, do not bring them to the 1130 celebration. Because typically all of our visitors come to the 11.30 or the 9 o'clock. So, uh, is that right? 9.30 or 11. Um, I get confused. 9.30 or 11, the two middle ones, uh, will be most of our visitors. So, if you don't mind that weekend, either coming to Saturday night or moving to 8 or 12.30 on Easter, it would really be a tremendous bless to, uh, blessing to our church and all the visitors that will be looking for parking and may not know exactly where to go now i know that y'all are the best part because you come to the middle celebration right come on now without that middle of the oreo that's the cream field that's the meat in the middle of the sandwich so i know that y'all are the best part but that weekend don't be the best part (laughs) come with the other celebrations listen two weeks ago was miracle sunday Miracle Sunday, y'all, come on. God's already done some great miracles in people's life. And uh, I want to answer the question everybody's asking. So let me just tell you, let me show you. Uh, This was Miracle Weekend stats. We had 584 donors to the tune of $765,000 in 33 states. Let's stop right there and give it up. I want to acknowledge that today. That's the largest single offering that we've ever taken in on one weekend. Uh, So we are not out of the woods just yet, though, but we are closer. What this allows us to do is get about a 30-day contract. So we're working in 30 days right now, uh, still praying for the loan to come through. So we're not out of the woods just yet, but we can see the clearing. So if you have not given yet, maybe you're waiting on tax money to come in or something like that, you can continually do so. Because remember, the goal is we need $2 million by the start of summer, the end of May, in order for us to build this safely and securely and to keep this building out of the elements. So let's stop and say, praise the Lord for what we took in. Amen. Praise the Lord. But still understanding... We do have a way to go, but we've taken a necessary step towards that. If you haven't started giving God his tithes back yet, 
Make sure you take on that journey too because God will richly bless you in ways that you never even imagined possible. Now, let me ask you a question. You know that when God was comparing us as his people um, to animals or to creation, anything like that, you know that he could have chosen anything to compare us to, right? I mean, he could have said something like, my people are like horses, strong but supportive, right? Uh, my people are like lions, courageous but calm. Uh, my people are like foxes, shrewd and clever. He could have said that, right? Uh, he, he could have said, my people are like doves, peaceful but committed. He even could have said, my people are like dogs. Hear me out. Fun but obedient. He could have even said, my people are like snakes. Sneaky and creepy. <laughs> and he would have been accurate as saying any of those. But instead, God chose to describe his people as sheep. But let's be honest. No one wants to be seen as a sheep, right? Sheep are helpless. They're, they're skittish. They're easily stressed. And sometimes sheep are just plain stupid. I've seen all kinds of animals get tattooed on people's bodies. Lions and tigers and birds and butterflies and bears, spiders and snakes. But I've only seen one tattoo of a sheep. And it was seven years ago I preached a message like this. And the next week a little girl walked up to me and said, Pastor, you said you've never seen anybody with a tattoo of a sheep. So Monday morning I went out and got a tattoo of a sheep. I said, girl, you misunderstood everything I said last week. <laughs> That is no lie. That is, that is absolutely true. She even got a tattoo of a sheep. But we don't want to be seen as sheep. Sheep are defenseless against attack. They require a shepherd to look after their every need. Sheep are confused easily. They get lost easily. We've all even seen the merch, right? We are lions, not sheep. We would even rather be seen as a goat than a sheep. Because we even argue about who the real goat is and we all know the real goat is michael jordan if you like kobe or you like lebron there's other churches for you out there but i'm telling you right now we are a michael jordan is the goat church <laughs> but in the world of nature sheep have a bond with their master that no other animal has a shepherd watches over his sheep closely and protects them with his life. He knows them each personally and uniquely. He knows those that are prone to wonder, but those who will stay close to his side. He knows the strong ones and the weak ones, the sick ones and the healthy ones. He knows the loyal ones and the clumsy one. And the Bible says he knows them all by name. And he just, well, he doesn't just know them. They also know him too. They're so familiar with the sound of his voice in the world of nature that shepherds will say that a sheep can tell the smell of his clothes. He can feel the touch of his staff, and they can distinguish their shepherd from 100 other shepherds. There's a bond between sheep and shepherd that is not found anywhere else in the world of nature. Not even man's best friend, a dog, has a type of relationship that a sheep has with a shepherd. And if you come to understand this, then maybe you will understand too that being called a sheep isn't such a bad thing after all. And maybe when we understand the nature of that nomenclature that we begin to see that Psalms 23 of why it has undoubtedly become the best known and well-quoted passages in the entire Bible. For many, it's the first passage that we have read to us as a child at our bedside, and for many of us, it'll be the last passage read to us at our graveside. Psalms 23 has calmed more souls than all the philosophy and poetry of the world. It has given courage to the disappointed, consolation to the dying, and comfort for the mourning. It has acted as ointment to the sick, hope for the captive, and help for the orphan. Maybe why Psalm 23 is so well-loved is because it's also so personal. When we read it, we don't think of David who was just shepherding the sheep 3,000 years ago. We begin to think that the Lord is our shepherd. In fact, there are no references to we or us or they, but only my and me and I and you. 
That is why it is so powerful, because it is so personal. And to recite it is to experience it. So for just a moment, I want to read to you Psalm 23 out of the King James Version, because I truly believe it is the most poetic version that can be read in, and probably the one that you have recited or remember in your mind. The Lord is my shepherd. Everyone say, my shepherd. And if you're going to experience this psalm in the appropriate manner, when you say, the Lord is my shepherd, put your hand upon your chest today and say, the Lord is my shepherd. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures and leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul and leadeth me the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We get the idea from this passage that David had experienced God in a unique way that he heard his voice personally, his, he followed his lead willingly, he felt his compassion and care daily. And beneath the beauty of these words are solid convictions that can only be formed during the crucible of crisis. You see, David knew what it was like to be all alone. He knew what it was like to be vulnerable, he knew what it was like to be frightened, he knew what it was like to be open to attack, and he knew what it was like to be in need. The Bible tells us that for seven years, David was on the run from King Saul as King Saul was threatening his life. David knew what it was like to be a sheep. But yet he also knew what it was like to be a shepherd. He was constantly confronting, he was constantly comforting, he was constantly leading, and he was constantly feeding. We've already established in here today that we are all lions. But let me ask you honestly, have you ever felt like a sheep? Prone to fear? Easily stressed or somewhat paranoid do you have a tendency in your life to worry about the little things do you ever need guidance from time to time have you ever found yourself extra jumpy or maybe extra edgy or find yourself feeling lost because if you have then you know what it means to be a sheep but we also know what it means like what it means to be a shepherd if you've ever led people or if you've ever been a boss or for goodness sakes if you've ever been a parent you know what it's like to throw your hands up in the air and ask, what's wrong with everybody in this house? What's wrong with everybody in this organization? And if you've ever been there, then you know what it, likes to be, or what it feels like to be a shepherd. We've all been sheep, and we've all been shepherd. And David had been both. And surprisingly, he's not ashamed of either. And society today can still be described as sheep. Sheep are nature's victims. They are known to get so overwhelmed by the little things that they will harm themselves by beating their heads against a tree just to keep a single fly from bothering them. They are also known to die from dehydration, just feet from water, because they can't see past their current situation. And if they do by chance happen to get the water, they are so desperate for relief that they will drink contaminated water even though they know it is killing them. They're so filled with anxiety that they will self-medicate with whatever is in front of them, even though that it is potentially harm for them. Doesn't this all sound familiar? Suicide is on the rise, and the leading causes of suicide are still stress and anxiety and the feeling of being lost or overwhelmed. And when we have these feelings, we automatically seek immediate relief, some things, even though we know those things bring eternal consequences. Alcohol, drug abuse, pornography, obesity, these things are still on the rise. And even though we know these things are bad for us, we keep drinking from polluted sources because it brings relief. So the title of today's message is, Mah. We are just sheep. Madonna has sold over 300 million albums worldwide and grossed $1.3 billion from ticketing and marketing sales. 
She was asked why she still works so hard at her age. And for those of you who may be shy, as surprised I was, she is now 65 years old. She said, I want to conquer, listen to this, I want to conquer the horrible feeling of inadequacy that plagues my life every day. To push past the feeling of mediocrity that I awake with every single morning. My personal mentor, a man who's meant a lot to my life, I call him Sly. You may know him as Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> He's now 77. He just recently had a documentary about his life, and he stated in that documentary that he's still trying to prove his worth to his old, his old man, even though his father died 13 years ago. We are all searching for something or trying to prove our worth to someone. And that is why the Old Testament prophet said, we, uh, Isaiah, we are all like sheep and we've gone astray. And each of us have turned to our own way. What does he mean by that? You see, left on our own, we will all create our own shepherd. For, um, it, for some, it could be a parent. For others, it might be a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a spouse. For the younger generation, maybe it's an influencer, maybe it's an athlete. For some, it might even be a preacher or a politician. And these things may be good guides, but they make terrible gods. They might be good examples, but they are bad shepherds. So what I really love about this passage is the emphasis is not upon the stupidity of the sheep, but the love and compassion of the shepherd. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The NIV says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. The NLT says, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. In his book, I Shall Not Want, Robert Ketchum tells the story of a Sunday school teacher who was asking her young class if any of them could quote the entirety of Psalm 23. As always, there was a little girl in the back who raised their hand and the teacher, you know, of course, was a little bit skeptical. So said, you really think that you can quote the entirety of psalm 23 she says of course i can she says all right little girl marches up to the front of the class stands behind the podium <clears throat> and began to say the lord is my shepherd and that's all i want <laughs> she may have overlooked a few verses but i think she captured david, captured david's heart right it all starts when we make the lord our shepherd so that is why david didn't just say the lord is a shepherd he said the lord is my shepherd and every promise in this psalm hinges on the power of those two little letters combined that form the word my because it might be easy for some of you today to believe in a god it may even be easy for some of you today to believe in an intelligent designer but what matters most is if you believe about this god and this intelligent designer cares about you and you have made him your shepherd so that's the question we would answer today, or at least wrestle with for a period of time. Is the Lord my shepherd? Because if we get our relationship right with him, then he fulfills his responsibility to us. In other words, when we make the Lord our shepherd, he now gives us all we need. So in the middle of David's chaotic life, as he's running in the desert, he's running and hiding in the middle of caves, he stops at some point and he looks up and says, why am I so afraid? Why am I so anxious about everything? Why am I always worried about my needs being met or getting nervous at the end of the month or every time I get called into an office or I come home from work, why do I need man's approval so much? Because if God is my shepherd, well, then that's all I need. If God is my shepherd, I will be restored. If God is my shepherd, I will be protected in the presence of my enemies. If God is my shepherd, I will always experience peace. If God is my shepherd, I will be comforted. If God is my shepherd, I will be dripping with oil and blessed with a cup that is running over. If God is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Do I got any gospel people in here today? Do I have any Maverick City fans in here today? Anybody ever know what it feels like when the Holy Spirit hits you when Maverick said he's singing to you and you start saying, I shall not want? No? No? I got a brother in here today. You want to help me out today? We're going to film our own little gospel group in here. I shall not want. I shall not want. My soul's got a shepherd in the valley and I shall not want. Okay, were you ready? I've got goodness and I got mercy. 
Hallelujah. They won't let me sing on the worship team, so I'll bring my own worship team up here. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. No, no. And he anoints me. Anoints me with his oil. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. No, no, no. No, let's go. I got goodness. And I got mercy. They get jealous when I start singing and preaching. You know what I'm saying? They won't let me do everything. But there comes a moment in your life when you got to sing to yourself to say, though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I got a shepherd because I got a shepherd. He'll protect me, he'll provide for me, and he will give me everything that I need. I shall not want. If God is my shepherd, I'll be okay because a good shepherd loves his sheep. A good shepherd provides for his sheep. And the Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Because for a good shepherd, there's no greater reward, there's no deeper satisfaction than knowing that his sheep are well-fed and flourishing in his care. As a sheep in his pasture, I need you to know today that you will never be any more loved than you are right now. Because sheep are not loved because of what they do. They're loved because of who they are and who's protecting them and watching over them. And too many of us in here today, we are scared, we are we're worried, we're nervous, wondering, how can I find peace, Pastor, when there's so much chaos and disorder and uneasiness in this world? I'll tell you how. You get to know the shepherd. Because if you're disconnected from the shepherd, you'll go to every other source to be fed or every other source to find your identity or develop your value system. And friends, you will come up empty every single time. If the Lord is your shepherd, though, you will never be in need. But if the Lord is not your shepherd, you will always feel empty. And David knew this. So that's why he gives us the, prom the promise of Psalm 23, that when we get restless, he leads us beside still waters. When we get hurt, he restores our soul. When we get confused, he leads us along the right path. When we get afraid, He's with us when we are anxious. His rod and his staff comfort us. When we have enemies, they can watch us eat. When we feel empty, he anoints our head with oil and makes our cup run over. When we fear death, we know that it's just a shadow and we will spend eternity in the house of the Lord. But how can we know these things to be true? Jesus comes on the scene and he tells us in John chapter 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But watch this. This is the red letter edition of the Bible. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the fullest or abundance for I am the good shepherd. And he gives a qualifier. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for his sheep. I am the good shepherd. He says it again. I know my sheep and they know me for I lay down my life for sheep. If you're one of the people who write in your Bible or you, you highlight in your Bible, you make notes in your Bible, underline that phrase, I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. I am the good shepherd. You see, in this journey called life, you're going to have to wrestle with who Jesus is and then reconcile that with what is going on in your life. I, I know that we live in an uncertain world at any moment we can experience disaster. And it's generally the unknown or the unexpected that frightens us. But Jesus says there is nothing that will quiet your soul faster and nothing will give you joy quicker than knowing that your good shepherd is near you, is for you, and is fighting to give you the fullest, most abundant life. But he also warns us, there is a thief that's out there and he comes to rob you of that full and abundant life. Here's what Jesus says. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. We've already said this, that if we do not make the Lord our shepherd, we will make something else our shepherd. Then it will always be a hired hand. And a hired hand promises to provide and protect, but they will only be with you when life is convenient. The moment that something newer comes along, the moment something smarter comes along or more appealing, 
you've experienced this enough to know that they will ditch you. And we all have experienced that. So that's why when we come to church and we hear promises about a good shepherd giving us everything we need and want in life, we're still a little bit doubtful. This whole faith thing is confusing to us because it sounds too good to be true. Everybody else has made promises and didn't come through. So we don't mind following Jesus when it's easy. But the moment when life gets difficult or life gets risky, we bail because we've been hurt before. We've been taken advantage of before. We've experienced too many hired hands who have bailed on us, who promised to provide and protect for us. So now we know there's only one person that will truly protect me, and that is me. Listen, I get it. We've all experienced hurts in life. So how can we know that Jesus is worthy of our trust? He's already told us. Because he's the good shepherd who sacrificed and laid down his life for us, the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd sacrificed his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep. That is why the apostle Paul says that we've been bought with a price. Peter says we are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. So let me tell you this again. You will never be more loved than you are right now because he is the good shepherd. But in order to become the good shepherd, he had to first become the lamb of God who would die in our place to lift up and take away the sin of the world, including our sin. Jesus is not a hired hand. It is with great personal care that he watches over us as his sheep because he purchased us by his own blood. So you don't need someone yelling at you to stop being a dumb sheep. You don't need someone yelling at you when you fail to get up and get over it. You don't need someone yelling at you when you're lost. You need someone yelling for you. Here, sheepy, sheepy. Here, sheepy, sheepy. Here, sheepy, sheepy. Here, Daniel, Daniel. Here, Daniel, Daniel. Here, Daniel, Daniel. Because we all know what it's lost to, to be lost in wonder. We all know what it's like to be afraid and all alone. But the Bible says that he came searching for us and seeking for us so that we might be in his flock so that he can be a good shepherd and give us all we need so here sheepy sheepy here daniel daniel a shepherd who searches for you and encourages you and feeds you and protects you and comforts you and lifts you up and puts you on his shoulders and carries you through the struggle you don't need a hired hand who will flee but a good shepherd who will lay down his life and that's what jesus did so when you trust in him he now sees something that belongs to him so he's not going to bail on you in the day of trouble he will stand in the gap when the enemy attacks your life so it doesn't matter what snarling and bloody and big bad wolf that you're facing he will not flee because by faith you are his and a good shepherd will protect you even though it cost him his life and for those of you who don't know the good shepherd today you need to know that our good shepherd is all-powerful, all-knowing, and ever-present. You got to know that our good shepherd causes valleys to be raised up and mountains to be made low. He can take rivers and turn them into highways and bones and the armies and graves and the gardens. That's our shepherd. He is a sea-splitting, stone-rolling, wind-whispering, fire from heaven, water from the rock, make the sun stop in the sky kind of shepherd. And this shepherd knows you by name. So if you ever doubt God loves you, look to the cross as proof that he walked through the valley of the shadow of death and took the stress and the shame and let it fall on him so that by his stripes we could be healed. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but our shepherd came to give you an anointed, abundant, cup overflowing, head dripping with oil kind of life. So the next time you feel broken down, man, look for a breakthrough. When you're down, to nothing you got to know God is up to something and here's how we know this is true because the hallmark of a shepherd is the quality of a sheep can I talk to the men in the room let me hear you men men is there anything worse when you take your girl out and uh, you're going to take her on a date night and you go to the mall and you're walking through the mall and she sees a dress that she likes and you're like, well, try it on, baby. She tries on that dress. And she comes walking down, and you're like, girl, you look good. I mean, like, good. 
Let's get it. And she said, we can't afford it. Is there anything worse, Dr. Vern, than your rib telling you you're not man enough to take care of her? Because that's how we hear it. Ain't no man going to talk to me in here today. All right, all right. Mamas, T-Money, let me talk to you. Is there anything worse than one of your babies tell you they're scared? And no matter whatever you do, you just can't comfort them. They feel lonely. They come home and they're experiencing anxiety. And as a mom, you know everything you can to protect them. And you just don't feel like you can. Is there anything worse? Because as a, as a mother, you want to provide safety for your kids. And, and men too. It works both ways. And as the shepherd of our flock, our home, we want to know that we can take care and provide for our, for our sheep. The, the, the people that God put under our care because the hallmark of the shepherd is the quality of the sheep and that's why he says if you know me as the shepherd then you shall not lack is, is God's name on the line you realize like he's like no 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 you in my care I'm gonna take care of you you in my care I'm gonna provide for you because it's my name that you bear and if it's his name that we bear and he God gives his people blessings then why do we apologize for the blessings all the time you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, I like your shoes. Well, I got them on sale at Ross. They're like 55% off, man. They just practically giving them to me. No. God says he will bless his children. I shall not want. I shall never be in need. I shall never lack. Because we bear his name. So the Lord said, as David said, the Lord is my shepherd. And that great affirmation leads to a great assertion because the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. This is not a state that we're trying to reach. It's a gift that we've been given as his children. We are sheep in his pasture. That's why Paul said, my God shall supply all of your needs. I don't think you understand the beauty and the power of Psalm 23 because you've heard it at too many funerals. He says, if you know that God is your shepherd, you will have everything that you need when you need it. And if you knew that, you'd be shouting me down right now. I was only gone one week. And I left a Pentecostal church and I came back to a Presbyterian church. I want to know where my people are at who believe that if God is their shepherd, he'll give them everything they need. And if they don't have it yet, they'll get it when they need it. God is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I don't mind being a sheep because he's my shepherd. I'll never run out of resources. He makes my cup run over. My beard will drip with oil and my enemies will watch me eat as I sit at my feet. Somebody say the Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. Y'all go ahead and say, I'm not even through yet. Y'all can get back on your feet here in a minute because I'm going to send a busload of Baptists out and bring a busload of Pentecostals in next week. I don't need to hear this. I've been stunning it all week. Someone needs to think of how healthy you are and say nothing. Someone needs to think about your job and shout nothing. Someone needs to think about your kids and shout nothing. Someone needs to think about the clothes on your back and the food on your table and shout nothing. Somebody needs to think about God's grace from where he brought you to where he's taking you or where you're at today and shout nothing. Somebody needs to think of the beauty of your spouse's face and shout nothing, girl. Somebody needs to think of this house. In the good preaching y'all get today, it shall nothing. nothing. Come on, somebody. Think about all that you've overcome in your life and shout nothing. nothing. Y'all aren't getting it. Some of you need to let your enemies hear you say nothing. nothing. Some of you let your, your stress hear you say nothing. nothing. Your sickness hear you say nothing. nothing. Your bills hear you say nothing. nothing. Your boss hear you say no nothing. nothing. Girls, your ex-boyfriend hear you say nothing. The people hating on you on Facebook say nothing. nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I may not have it yet, but I'll get it when I need it. I'm going to bless myself up here today. Preacher, you're doing good today. We need to let you be gone one more week because you come back on fire. I'm going to touch three people and say nothing. Come on up here. Come on up here. Don't be scared. Come on. Come on, girls. Right there. Right there. Right there. Nothing. Nothing. Come on. Come on. Nothing. I'm going to tell you nothing. I'm telling you if God is your shepherd, listen to me, girls, you will lack nothing. I wish you get it at your age. 
so that you don't get to be their age and sit there all quiet. Because y'all will know if I get it now, I'll have it with me the rest of my life. Even though it looks like I ain't got nothing, I got something. I got goodness and I got mercy. Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. He anoints me, anoints me with his oil. Presence and power of God is oil. Hey, okay, okay, all right. I see what I'm working with, all right. Lord bless these people, bless them. This is good stuff up here, this is good. You gotta know how valuable you are so you won't settle for less than what God has made for you and has in store for you. Man, David made some mistakes as a shepherd, but he never forgot his worth as a sheep. So do you know God as your shepherd? Is your relationship with him all that it could be and all that it should be? We've talked about the Lord is our shepherd. I just want to know, is the Lord your shepherd? If not, he can be. He's whispering. Here, sheepy, 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 sheepy. Hey, once again, I want to say thank you for watching today's message. Uh, do us a favor. If you enjoyed this, share it with all of your friends and family. And if we are making a difference in your life, would you consider investing back in to Mountain View? You can go to our Give page, and there you can invest not only in our general fund, but also our legacy and expansion project. It's been an honor to be with you today, and may God bless you.